Hey everybody, it's PJ. Um, I talked about this super cool slide rule and uh, I just wanted to go over it really quick and uh, show you some of the things that I like about it. Um, kind of quick overview first off. Um, this first side is two-sided. You got your uh, super heat on TXV and uh, we'll go over the function of it and the different settings. It takes you step by step what to do and how to set it. Flip it over, you got your sub cooling for TXV. Um, and it tells you how important it is to make sure you're actually working with a TXV. <laughs> I think you know what kind of mess you'd be into there if you didn't. Okay, so this side deals with sub cooling and superheat. You turn it over, and uh, this part is just a, a folded side here. Um, up here in the corner, wet bulb conversion chart. So, if you know your percentage of humidity and your dry bulb temperature, you can come up with your wet bulb temperature. So, 75 degrees temperature and 40% humidity would be 60 degrees wet bulb. So that's nice for somebody that um, doesn't have that meter. Um, right below that, electric heat strips. Just a uh, quick and easy 5 kilowatt, pulls 20 amps, and what size wire to use for that would be number 10 wire. Um, talks about circuits in series and parallel circuits and how to figure up your resistance and um, what you'd be pulling. Very nice stuff. Um, Capacitors talks about parallel and series capacitors replacing a dual run with two separate capacitors How you can hook your common together and use a uh, 4d and a 5 separately and um, And what to do with some capacitors um, Sorry about this is shaky um, System operating diagnostics This is pretty nice um, Just a real quick easy chart um, you know, it goes over, and it, it's pretty good, you know, to, if you look at some of it, you know, um, you're like, under charge, head PSI is low, suction PSI is low, superheat, way high, our subcooling's low, and our amps are real low, hmm, sounds like an undercharge, um, bad compressor valves, you know, if that's not something you run into a lot, it's nice to have a little chart to kind of uh, run by what you're seeing and uh, make sure, you know, it's kind of uh, just like running it by somebody else and making sure you're thinking the right thing. Sometimes that's nice. Um, troubleshooting compressors. Talks about disconnect the pri uh, compressor, how to ohm them out, what you should be looking at. Um, troubleshooting TXVs. Um, you know how to check those that's that's pretty nice you know like um, putting your temperature clamp before and after the TXV and checking your difference there um, up in the other corner you got the Ohm's law and then all kinds of different formulas that you might run across what the legends mean um, BTU okay that's what it is CFM Converge to liters per second, feet per minute, to meters per second, you know, some conversions, of course they're a disclaimer. You open up that cover, and there's still more, test for a correct system airflow. Check in your dry bulb and your wet bulb, um, and it goes through um, the procedure for that. Up here, test for correct system airflow and heating. Um, gas heating and electric heating sheet metal gauge recommendations and conversions um, yeah that's pretty self-explanatory recommended duct velocities duct velocities um, over here we have correct pressure drop um, your total pressure drop inches of water column now, the other part of the slide rule is 
um, like a duck calculator. I don't know if you guys use this or not. I've always used a duck calculator of some sort, slide chart, and boy, it's helped me a bunch. Um, you know, I always, unless I know what my friction is going to be, I will go with the standard of 0.1. Um, so let's say I know this furnace I'm going to put in, whatever it is, is 1600 CFM. So I'll pull the, my 0.1 or whatever friction. If you know your friction is 0.8, then you go to 0.8 or 0.08. I'm sorry. If it's 0.1, so okay, 1600. And it'll go through the whole deal for you what to do, how to size it. So now that I set that to 1600, what size round pipe would I need? Eh, between six, about 16 and a half, so 17 inch round pipe would handle that. Or if I want to use a by eight trunk, looks like 30, 32 by eight is what I would need. Or 24 by 10, maybe for your return. So, um, Okay, and it also talks about CFM for smooth metal and uh, like duckboard CFM as well. So, um, and it tells you how to come up with that. So, the super cool slide rule overall is definitely a thumbs up. I use it a lot for my superheat and subcooling. Um, <clears throat> it just, I. I can't say enough how much I like this. Um, I've been using it a lot. Um, I've been using the duct calculator a lot. I've only had this about a week. I've been using the duct calculator and I've been, you know, just testing it out on superheat and subcooling, seeing how I like that. Um, and also, you know, I've been doing this a long time, but it is nice, the diagnostic thing. You know, like loose TXV bulb. You know, a lot of times, do I think to check for that? Well, I guess if you find that kind of stuff, then you're going to get, um, uh, you're going to get investigating and probably you're going to find it, but it's nice. If you've been off of AC work for, you know, seven months because you've been in heating and now you're slammed back into air conditioning because you got all of a sudden got a 90 degree day and you're running around like crazy, kind of nice to have something like this. So, um, like I said, it was $19.99. Uh, I ordered it directly from their website, and uh, uh, I, I like it a lot. I would definitely recommend it for anybody doing HVAC work. So, there's my two cents on the super cool slide rule. Thanks, guys. Bye.